This episode brought to you by MeepleRealty.com, your source for high-quality custom board game inserts. Meeple Realty, think inside the box. Welcome back to Board Online, Board Offline. Today we're going to get into the first uh, video of our showdown with the Phoenix. Now this is going to be split into two videos because it did run a little bit on the long side. Now you saw at the end of the hunt phase, it was... Um, not particularly difficult hunt, but we did, you know, deal with some stuff there that could affect the actual fight. And again, I've never fought the Phoenix before. So as we're playing, you're going to see me kind of learning how this thing works, learning what the tactics are against it and what tactics is going to use against me. And there are going to be some rules, uh, mishaps, we'll say, during the showdown. But I think I found most of them and I notate them as they happen. If you see any more please uh, leave a comment so that I can try to avoid that in future playdowns, future showdowns as well. Hope you enjoy this. Let's get right into our showdown with the Phoenix. The Phoenix fills the horizon of your mind. Complex and disturbing, your very essence seems to flicker like a dying lantern. A perfect mixture of excitement and dread shakes up your insides. Before you realize it, you find yourself stepping forward to battle. Okay, so I think we are ready to go. Let's get this show on the road. Very first AI card. Again, I am. I have not looked through any of this. I am learning about the Phoenix as we play this together. So some of y'all may see some awful traps I'm about to fall into, but here we go. This is gonna be a fun time. First off, unspoken, advanced, right off the bat. The Phoenix unspeaks a name. The survivor with the most age tokens suffers unspeak. Randomize in case of ties. All right, well, all right, so we, let's, let's figure out who's going to be first. Uh, what we'll do, I'll roll a d10, and we'll go with um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 3, so that's, oh, Charlize. Okay, so we rolled the D10 to see who it was. So now unspeak, roll one D10 to subtract the survivor's current age tokens from the result. If the result is equal to or greater than their understanding, they suffer lost name. Otherwise, nothing happens. So equal to or greater than the understanding. Charlize's understanding is one. So, oh wait, so there's nothing. Because roll one D10 to subtract the survivor's current age tokens from the result. So that she's going to suffer lost name no matter what because uh, she only has one understanding and I can't I can't roll less than a one. So lost name gain plus two understanding, interesting, and then erase the survivor's name, remove all age tokens and lose all survival. Whoa! Until they are renamed at the settlement, they cannot gain survival. If a survivor is given the same name, they cease to exist. Very interesting. All right, so. We're gonna go gain plus two understanding, but then erase her name. Okay, so first let's see, we got plus two understanding, which means she's gained insight, so we'll have to do that event in a moment. But she's now the survivor formerly known as Charlize. I have to give her a symbol or something. And she loses all her survival. That is what's gonna be brutal in this fight. Okay. Let's take a look at insight. In a single moment, the curtain of the world pulls back. Select the epiphany corresponding to the current game phase, which of course is the showdown phase right here. A survivor may only gain these benefits once a lifetime. All right, we got to roll, let's see. Watching the chaotic movements of monsters, you perceive a pattern. Perhaps its motives are no, not so different from your own. You can imagine yourself in the monster's place. Gain the following ability and roll on the table below. Analyze. At the start of the survivor's turn, if you are adjacent to the monster, reveal the top AI card, then place it back on top of the deck. Well, that could be useful. All right, so we're just going to refer to Charlize as the artist for, for this fight until she gets a new name. She has the Analyze ability, so let's go ahead and put that on here. And then we've got to roll a D10, so let's do that. Oh, that is probably not good. Actually, not so bad. I guess basically 
probably with, with these, when you know, I, I, when you've gained understanding, no matter what you get, it's going to be good. But obviously not as good as it could be because down here would have movement and accuracy or so. So, but we do get to ignore the next severe injury, this showdown. So I imagine some of those are going to be handed out. So let's make sure we jot that down. Okay. So now though, because of zeal, the monster is going to perform his basic action at the end of his turn. And once again, we've got closest, oops, cool now. There we go, closest threat in range. All right, so that is going to be, uh, I mean, they're, they're all the exact same distance. They're all six, uh, six spaces away. Monster, the monster's moving, by the way. We didn't look at the monster's stats here. The monster has eight movement and 10 toughness. So that we've gotta be concerned about. And of course, in the monster's AI deck, there are a total of uh, 12 cards. All right, but he's got eight movement, so all of us are in range. So we've got to choose somebody. Who do we choose? I'm thinking Lecter. He does, Lecter's got the bone paint, but at the same time, everyone else. We don't want Clarice to die yet or to take anything severe yet because she's got the claw head arrow we want to try to use. I think Lecter is the, the least of us right now. So he's right here. So we're going to turn... He's being targeted. Oh, he gains one age token. All right, so that puts, he's the first of us to get an age token. And next we've got, gonna move towards him. So one, two, three, four, which will clear this out. And right on up to five. And then finally, it's gonna be two speed, so he's gonna attack with two dice, but it's a two plus accuracy. Actually, hold on y'all, let's let's back this back out real quick. Before we move the Phoenix, and I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to wrap my head around everything this, this bird's doing here, but before we move the Phoenix, I'm gonna have Lecter spend one survival, which brings him down to three survival, to use dash. Uh, I do have dash and encourage, and of course dodge as my options. I don't have access to, to surge or endure yet, but we're gonna use we're gonna use dash because she has no survival at all, so she can't get out of the way of what's gonna happen at the end, which of course is the razor winds that are gonna happen at the end of this basic action. Come on, I don't want to have trouble focusing here. There we go. So the razor winds are gonna be pretty brutal. So I'm gonna get Lecter to drag this thing away a little bit, and we're gonna go. One, two, three, four, five. Let's go there. I think that will leave him by himself against, let's see. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight which will destroy this piece here as well. So two of our three stone columns are gone. Lecter's over there by himself. He is just out of, uh, out of the window, out of the zone for the razor wind. So I think we're good. All right, so that ends the Phoenix's first turn. Now, of course, the Phoenix ambushed us, so let's see what it's gonna do next. Next, we've got, come on now, Haze, which is a mood. All right, lantern lights trail in the darkness. Everything slows and thoughts are clear. Each age token gains the following effects while Haze is in play. Minus one movement, minus one speed. Okay, so that's only Lecter who's currently dealing with that. Speed and movement cannot be reduced below one, of course. And movement from dash and activations from surge are not affected by Haze. Okay, so that's interesting. Now, it's a mood, so we could use our whisker harp to try to get rid of that, which we'll see that may be worthwhile. Now, of course, we gotta do the basic action again. Closest threat in range. Now, this time, the closest threat is going to be Wallace back here. Wallace is only two spaces away, while Lecter is now one, two, three spaces away. 
Elect or Wallace is going to gain one age token, which puts him, of course, at one age token so far. Now, do we want to spend one of his survival as well to get out of the way of this? Actually, he probably can't get far enough away. He's going to get hit no matter what. So I think we will not use his survival to surge. Instead, we're going to see maybe if we can dodge or something. But so here we go. Move. It's going to turn. And let's have a move here. There we go. Two plus accuracy. Now Wallace, though, let's see what he's got. He's got one evasion, so it's going to be three plus accuracy. And that's everything that's going to help him out here at the moment. All right, so one miss. One is a hit, though. And now we could go ahead and dodge that, but he's got armor. Well, I mean, wait, you know what? Actually, we get to see where it hits anyway first. So let's check it out. His head. It'll be two damage. He's got three armor on his head. Let's go ahead and take it. We'll, we'll take that. So Wallace is down to one armor on his head. Okay, I just realized a point of strategy against the Phoenix. Move and attack, there is now, there's a flow in between move and attack and razor wind. Here. This is where the dashes really can come into, into your favor. So I am gonna have Wallace now dash. He's gonna spend one survival and dash out of the way of the razor wind. So where do we want him to go? I think it's probably best to try to not stay, to, to be as, to keep your survivors not clumped up. So I'm gonna move him here. And so then the razor wind happens and no one is affected by it. And now finally the survivors get a turn. So the very first thing we want to do is see if we can hit successfully with the claw head arrow. So if we move, let's see, is the, the bow, the cat got bow has a range of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So if I move there, then I'm close enough to attack. Now the claw head arrow has one speed, six plus accuracy. Oh, all right. So I missed. That is her turn. So next, I think we've got we've got Lecter right there next to the blind spot. So let's go ahead and move him in to the blind spot. And ju just for reference, any of the three spaces immediately behind the Phoenix are the Phoenix's blind spot. So Lecter, of course, is activating his blood paint, which means he's going to attack with a bone axe twice. And uh, this is with six plus is for the accuracy. He's got nothing to enhance that. Two eights. All right, so we get two hits. First hit is to the glorious chest. And the other one is to the feathered buttocks. Both have wound. Let's see. Perform displacement. Displacement. Place the phoenix anywhere along the board edge furthest from the attacker. All right, so not that. Or this one. If the attacker has any age tokens, they suffer rewind. Undo the survivor's attack. Restore any wounds or persistent injuries this attack caused to the monster. Place the survivor five spaces away from the monster. What? All right, so either one of these, if we wound, if we if we wound with either one of these, we're, we're unless we critically wound, we're in trouble. Wow. Well, I guess we'll do displacement because at least then, if the, if the attacker has any uh, age tokens, they may attempt to follow the Phoenix by rolling 1d10. If the result is equal to or less than their hunt XP, Place them in a free space adjacent to the Phoenix after it is placed. Otherwise, cancel all hits, not arranged. All right. Yep. So, Glorious Crest we'll go with because at least it looks like with this one, yeah, with, with, with Feathered Buttocks, you hit him there, then the attack doesn't even count. All right. So, here we go. Now, the monster, the Phoenix, has, like I said, toughness of 10. This Bone Axe has Strength 3. And that's that's it. So strength three. So I've got to roll a uh, seven or higher. 
Ooh, yes. Okay, so right off the bat, we've got one wound. So there we go. Let's take this AI card, put it in the discard, put it in the wound stack. Okay. All right. Now, of course, we got to do displacement. So the farthest board edge from the attacker. So the board edge that is farthest from the attacker clearly is this one, and the Phoenix can go anywhere along that board edge. So we'll go ahead and move it. I mean, I'm fine with it going right there, I suppose. And as far as attempting to follow, that's not even an option because I don't have any hunt XP left, or any hunt XP yet, I should say. So that's it for Lecter's turn. And so now, of course, we have the issue that all of our survivors are too far away, or the remaining survivors are too far away to do anything as far as an attack goes. So instead, I think what we'll do is we'll have them interact with the train a bit while we wait on the Phoenix to get back over to us. So Charlize is going to come over here to the Acanthus. Six which is find something tasty and consume it. If you do gain plus one survival, archive this terrain. The problem of course is that Charlize can't gain survival. So really this is just consumed and nothing good comes from it. I probably should have thought about that before I decided to have her go after the Acanthus plant. To be fair, I've only dealt with the Acanthus plant once before in my only fight against the Screaming Antelope. But you live and you learn, well, Hopefully we live, but we definitely learned. So that leaves us with Wallace. All right, we'll have Wallace also go. Well, you know what? Wallace has, nope, he does. He could take some survival. So let's go up here and Wallace will also interact with that acanthus plant. Four, which is, again, oh, nope, nope, not again. Find nothing, archive this terrain. So the acanthus was a complete waste of time this time and so now we've got to see what the phoenix is going to do next uh analtorium roll 1d10 on result of six plus a random survivor in the blind spot is pulled in okay yep well nobody's in the blind spot uh so we're good we're good there which means now the phoenix is going to do his basic action Closest threat is going to be, I believe it'll be Wallace. Yeah, Wallace is the closest by one, which means that the Phoenix will turn around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now the Razor Winds are gonna catch Lecter, who I think will instead use one of his survival, bringing him down to two survival to dash oh you know what by the way I forgot uh, Wallace was the target here which means Wallace gains another age token which puts him at two age tokens now so Lecter will go one to get out of the zone and two three four five and you know what we'll go ahead and have Wallace go next he has plus one movement so he's at six movement total one, two, three, four, five, six. So he's going to come in at the side here of the Phoenix. Actually, hold on, that's incorrect. I forgot that Hayes is still in play. And since, since Wallace has two age tokens, he's got minus two movement and minus two speed. So one two three four five he was there so i think that instead of of moving to attack wallace is actually going to use the whisker harp and attempt to remove the haze mood from play so to do this he needs to roll a six plus got it all right so haze will go back into the ai discard pile and now that is done now he could still move so I think now Wallace will actually move away from the Phoenix because he does have, as does everybody, have access to dash. So he's going to move one, two, three, four, because that'll get him one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine spaces away from the Phoenix. So the Phoenix will have to do something a little bit more than just its regular basic action to get to him.
And that is just off screen, but he's right there. So next up, let's have Lecter go after him. Now Lecter, of course, is the only one who's actually damaged the Phoenix so far. So let's go one, two, three, four. Puts him adjacent. Actually, I guess technically right there is adjacent. Because the Phoenix is in. Yeah, okay. So he'll attack from there. Now again, he's using the blood paint, so we're going to attack twice with a bone axe, hopefully. Uh, six plus for the accuracy. We got two hits again. All right, glorious head and soft lower gut. The underside is pale and soft, minus two toughness, this wound location. Oh yeah, we're doing that first for sure. All right, bone axe has three strength. The Phoenix has 10 toughness, but minus two toughness, so eight toughness. So we only need a five. We need a five in order to wound this location. Oh, are you kidding me? Nothing. All right, so the soft lower gut did not give us anything. Now, here we go with the glorious head. All right, so now this one is gonna need a seven in order to wound. Oh, jeez. All right, nothing doing that time. However, he used the blood paint, which means he's attacking again with the other bone axe. So once again, six plus. Perfect hit. And with a perfect hit, the bone axe has savage. Once per attack, if you, oh no, no. You know what, I'm sorry. Savage is for critically wounding. So it doesn't, that, that we're not there yet. We're not there yet, but we do get, um, we get a wound. Okay, so let's see what we've got there. The feathered back, okay. So here we go, we need a seven. Nothing, oh my gosh. So Wallace is over there just hacking away at the Phoenix with his ax, but just not doing any damage whatsoever. It's pretty pathetic, Wallace. You need to get your, you need to get your stuff together. Okay, let's move on to Clarice. All right, so we've got Clarice down here. She needs to be within range six, and the Lonely Tree needs to not be blocking her line of sight. So let's see, if we went, whoa, oh, whoa what am I doing? One, two, three, four, five. The Lonely Tree is definitely blocking. One, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, four, five. We'll go there, because now we've got one, two, three, four, let's go let's go there instead because we're here one two three four so now she's six spaces away right one two three four five six yeah stay as far away from this guy as possible except by the way the cat got bow of course is cumbersome so she's not able to move and use it so instead that movement we'll say was her using her survival to dash so she is down uh, Clarice is down to three survival, so the dashing got her to where she is. And now we'll do the actual attack with the cat gut bow. All right, so we need seven plus. One hit, okay. The hard beak, super dense. Well, fortunately, this is not a frail weapon. Good to know he has a super dense location, though. All right, he's got a reflex, so... He's gonna react no matter what. Now the cat got bow has three strength, so we need a seven plus. Got it, all right. So he is wounded. Let's go ahead and take that AI card off. And then we've got the monster's glare pierces the survivor's puny mind, causing explosions of pain. Turn to face the attacker and roll 1d10. If the result is less than the attacker's hunt XP, they suffer one brain damage for each age token they have. Ah, joke's on you, Phoenix. I don't have any hunt XP yet, so you can't you can't even successfully do this to me. All right, but he will still turn it. Well, he already is. Well, let's let's look at this. So she's diagonal to him, so he can't technically fully face her. But she's already, you know, he's already um, he's already facing her as far as the game mechanics go because that's anything this way in front of him so i think we're fine that way technically 
if he were to be facing this way, he would also be facing her, I believe, because she's still in front of him. So I think we'll just leave it the way it is, and that should fulfill that requirement. And finally, we have the artist over here who hasn't done anything yet, and she's got the best weapon out of anybody, and she's got two luck, and we really need to get her involved here. So let me see if, if we dash. Oh, she can't dash. She has no, she has no survival. So we're just going to have to move her. One, two, three, four, five. And hope next turn she gets a chance. However, what she can do is use the uh, Rawhide Headband to reveal the top two AI cards. So let's see what those are. First, we've got Deja Vu which is a legendary card. Yeesh. All right, I'm thinking we don't want a legendary card to get pulled. Well, let's read what it says, though. Deja vu. A strange feeling fills the survivors, threatening to overtake them. If the survivors have 25 or more age tokens between them, well, we don't. Get a new settlement record sheet and start a new campaign from the first story with the current survivors, any gear and resources they currently have with them. If the survivors have fewer than 25 age tokens between them, each survivor with no age tokens rolls 1d10 on a result of 7 plus that survivor sees. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, let's not have that happen. That's terrible. All right. And we've got Peck as the other one, which is a basic card. I don't care what it says. We're keeping Peck. We'll put Peck on top, which is what... The Phoenix is, will, is about to do, and then hopefully that means during the survivor's next turn, they can get rid of that legendary card. All right, so here we go, monster's turn. Like we said, we've got Peck, pick target, last threat to wound in range. That is going to be uh, Clarice, who shot him with her bow. So that target gains uh, one age token. That is her first for the game. All right, so I think I'm gonna to wanna to have her dash to get out of the way of this during this flow right here because uh, before damage, destroy or reduce armor at this hit location to zero before applying damage. So I think we're definitely gonna to wanna to try to get her out of range of this guy. So if we just go one, two, three, four, well, let's see from him, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So he can get as far as there so let's move her here, which will reduce her survival to two. Actually, we should probably do full move because the, the Phoenix is gonna go basic action after that. So she was here, so one, two, three, four. It's not gonna matter, but we'll go to move her there. And yeah, so now the Phoenix goes one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so as, as far as I know, moving, as long as the Phoenix does his full move the way he's supposed to, moving him in such a way as to not have my survivors in the Razor Wind, if possible, while still moving him closer to his survivor, is completely legitimate. Someone let me know if that's not the case, and in the future I'll make sure to correct that in my plays, but I'll, I'll keep playing uh that way for now so let's see where are we at so he moved razor wind doesn't happen it is now the survivor's turn okay survivor's turn we're gonna have our uh artist down here formerly known as sharies or charlie's one two three right in the blind spot here we go finally finally we're gonna get to see muramasa do its thing all right, so this weapon has six speed, okay? And uh, let's see, and then six plus accuracy. It is frail, so hopefully we don't get a super dense location. All right, no, no. So we only got two hits. All right. But let's see what we get. Glorious handed feet with a reflex and glorious soft belly with a wound. If the attacker has any age tokens, they suffer. We rewind. We're not going to do that yet. All right, so reflex. Okay, we saw this happen a minute ago. 
All right, well, anyway, uh, or something similar at least. So let's do this real quick. We're going to go with, now it has six strength. It also has deadly two. So, and she already has plus one luck. So now basically we're at the point where a seven or higher, a seven or higher will be a critical wound and a four or higher. No, 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 correct. She has two strength. So a two or higher is a wound. A seven or higher is a critical wound. Yes, critical wound. Okay, so the reflex doesn't happen. We've got gain one random phoenix resource and you smash apart the monster's foot. In triumph, you may spend one survival to howl and encourage all night down survivors. Well, unfortunately, she has no survival. So let's take that AI card, which of course was the legendary card. So fortunately, that's gone now. What else do we get here? One random phoenix resource. And we're going to get... <laughs> Muculent droppings in organ, delicately scented papery husk. All right, so next we've got the glorious soft belly. If we wound, we're going to suffer rewind. So, but if we critically wound, we won't. All right. Oh wait, undo the survivor's attack. Does that mean the entire attack? Should I have done this first? Oh my gosh, I think I should have done that first. It's too late now. I didn't read that close enough. I was I was thinking it only I was thinking rewind only affected this particular wound, but it actually looks like it affects the entire attack. Well, hopefully seven plus seven plus. Oh, <sighs> okay. Oh wow. Okay, so that means that this legendary card comes back. So now the survivor also. Place of our five spaces away from the monster. Oh man, y'all, I am not looking forward to dealing. Well, we still have that. Was, that was our first attack, so really, we could still get rid of that legendary card. But man, I messed that up. So she moves one, two, three, four, five spaces away. I think we'll go ahead and go to Clarice now, and instead of using her bow, we're gonna go with the counterweighted axe, which has. Re oh, it has reached two, so really, from right there, one, two, oh wait, no. Yeah, there we go, okay. Okay, so reach two, here we go, it is two speed, with six plus accuracy. Two hits. We've got the glorious wing sphincter, fantastic. And the uh, Glorious Wing Claws. Both have a wound. But, uh, Eye of the Storm. The Phoenix blows everything away. Survivors in the Eye of the Storm gain plus one insanity. All other survivors, su all other survivors suffer knockback seven. Okay. And Bash. Good to know. So hopefully we get a critical here. But it has strength four. So... A wound will be on six or higher, and there's no luck involved here. So, and unfortunately, those weren't perfect hits. That would have been fantastic if they were. All right, so here we go, six or higher. And oh, which one are we doing first? I guess it doesn't matter. We, we got a, they had the exact same issue. So, we'll go with the, we'll go with this one, hoping to crit wound the wing claws. Nothing, no wound, nothing. All right. And now for the glorious wing sphincter. A seven. So we did wound it. All right. So we, okay. So we got rid of this legendary AI card again. But now we have to do the wound reaction, which means that everybody, everybody is going to get knocked back seven and bash. So that is going to look like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and knock down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then while it's up here, just get slammed against the wall and knock down. 
All right, so let's see what the Phoenix is going to do now that everybody is laying down on the job. We've got Bored. Oh, that figures. Mood. While Bored is in play, the Phoenix gains minus two toughness tokens. Okay, I can deal with that. What else? Instead of drawing AI, Spiral Cyclone. Spiral Cyclone. Survivors in the Eye of the Storm gain plus one insanity and plus one survival. All other survivors suffer damage equal to the monster's level. Knockback, Seven, and Bash. Wow. Uh, after Spiral Cyclone is performed, discard, board, and then perform Disdain. All right, so minus two toughness. So this is an opening for us if we can get close enough to take advantage. And now normally the Phoenix would do the basic action, go up and go for the closest threat, which would be Wallace if he wasn't knocked down, but he's knocked down so he's not a threat. So instead we do Disdain. Disdain. Place the phoenix at the center of the nightmare tree. It emits a hissing moan. All non-deaf survivors suffer brain damage equal to the monster's level. Perform Spiral Age. End the phoenix's turn. So the phoenix is going to go to the lonely tree. And now every survivor suffers brain damage, which means Clarice is down to one insanity. The artist has no insanity. Lecter has no insanity now, and Wallace has zero insanity now. Okay. Now, Spiral Age. Remove all age tokens and gain four hunt XP for each token. If you gain more hunt XP than available, hunt XP boxes, okay, yeah, so four hunt XP for each token. Well, we got some interesting stuff going on here, so let's, let's take a look at this. So Clarice had one age token, which means she's going to get 4 hunt XP. Which means she has now reached the first age for her. The same goes for Lecter, who also had one age token. And then Wallace actually had two age tokens. So he's getting eight. So we have got some age events to deal with here. So let's, let's sort through all this. Your time in the darkness changes you. Gain the benefits for the hunt XP milestone you've reached. A survivor may only gain each milestone benefit once a lifetime. So all three of them are getting weapon proficiency. You may now select a weapon type for weapon proficiency. If you wound a monster with a select weapon type, you now are now eligible to gain a proficiency level during the aftermath. Roll on the table below. So first we gotta gain a weapon for each of them be, to be proficient with. I think with Clarice, we'll give her the bow. Okay. And with Lecter, he's got the axes. Let's go on and give him the axe proficiency. And with Wallace, the guitar. So now we're going to roll on this table for each of them. So let's go back over the dice tower and we can see what happens there. All right, so first we're going to go with Clarice. An eight. That, oh wait, we got to roll 2d10. I'm sorry, 2d10. Let's go one more. So 11. And that is going to be one random fighting art. All right, tumble. When something would collide with you, roll 1d10. On a result of 6+, plus, you successfully tumble out of harm's way. Instead, place your survivor standing on the closest free space outside of the collision path. Okay, that's a pretty good one. That, that can help uh, save some, some uh, survival, you know, in certain cases where I might be dodging. Not in all dodge cases, but in some dodge cases, or excuse me, not dodge, dash. In certain dash cases... That could be a way to, to get out of the way instead of using survival. All right, so next we're going to go for Lecter. Again, 2d10. A 9. A random fighting art as well. Extra sense. You may dodge one additional time per round. Okay. And now Wallace needs the same thing. 12. That should be a fighting art as well. Yes, it is. Rhythm Chaser. On arrival, gain plus one evasion token. 
when you are knocked down, if you don't have an instrument in your gear grid, remove all your plus one evasion tokens. Rhythm Chaser cannot be used if there is any heavy gear in your grid. Okay, that's an interesting one. Okay, so now though, Wallace also got improved reflexes because of how much he aged. The years sharpen your reflexes, roll on the table below, 2d10 again, let's go see what happens there. What is that? That's a 14. Gain plus one permanent strength. Very nice. Okay, so that was pretty eventful for a monster turn that didn't involve an actual attack uh, or a monster action that didn't involve an attack. So, I mean, I guess that's what we can expect. But, I mean, look at that. Wallace is halfway to dead at this point halfway to ceasing to exist so we really need to come at this guy hard we need to take him out so now that was the end of the monster's turn so everybody stands up once again because she has no survival the artist can't get to the phoenix so she is going to look at the top two ai cards so we can try to get a good one gone we've got a mood and a basic I'm thinking the mood, yeah, I'm thinking we're going to try to get rid of the mood. Well, of course, hopefully we'll get rid of both of them. And then she will go ahead and go one, two, three, four, five. All right. So now I think we'll have, we'll have Lecter come down. So Lecter is going to spend one survival to go one, two, three, four, five. That drops him down to one survival left. And now his regular movement, one, two, three, four, five, gets him into the blind spot where he's going to attack with his bone axes using the blood paint. All right, so again, he's got, he's got two speed and we need six plus so one hit the glorious hands you strike the monsters powerful digits okay and what we need now he's got three strength so we need a seven plus oh nothing nothing at all okay well again he used the blood paint so he's attacking again with the with the bone axe Six plus, one hit. The inner face, minus two toughness is wound location. If the Phoenix is, oh, okay, well, he's not gonna be killed because we've got plenty of AI cards left. So, uh, what do I say, minus two toughness? So normally, need a seven, we're gonna need a five. A four, are you kidding me? Oh, that's so bad. I can't believe that. What a waste of time. Okay. Uh, so now we need Clarice to come in with her, her bow. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, oh, no. So we're going to have to, she'll have to use dash to get there. And that'll... But we need to wound. We need to wound. We need to get this. The way he can age us, we have to get some wounds on this guy. Plus, there's that mood card there. So she's going. She's going to dash. She's going to do it. We'll go one, two, three, four, five, and then let's see one, two, three, four, five. I was thinking it might be nice if we could get close enough to use the axe, but we're not going to do that. So I said one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. No reason to step away. We'll just go right there. And she's gonna fire her bow. So one thing I can do with the bow is I could drop my speed to drop my speed by one to gain accuracy plus two. So I'd only have to roll a five, but I, I prefer rolling more dice. I, I'm sure that actually probably the math works better in my favor the other way, but still gonna roll two dice, seven plus is what we need. Nice, and that's why I like rolling two dice. All right, so we have, all right, so here's a first strike. We have to do that. The glorious primary eyes and then the feathered 
breast. So first strike, yep, you must roll to win this first. Or I, So I can cancel my attack, or the monster stares into your future and kills all your children. The attacker suffers destroyed genital severe waste injury. Ooh. Mm, or I could cancel my attack. You know what? You know what? Clarice didn't really want... Clarice, actually, Clarice has kids at the settlement anyway. You know what? She's had enough kids. She's, uh, she's, she's fine with this. She's going to take this chance. Or not even a chance. It's going to happen. She's fine with this. She's going to take one for the team. Here we go. Uh, and what do we need here? Oh! Y'all! How did I forget the Phoenix has minus two toughness? How many wounds did I successfully hit on him a minute ago? Uh, give me a second. I'm going to look at the replay, and we're going to fix this. Okay. Did a little checking. I only There, there was only one wound that would have occurred, um, and that was for... So there, there's the AI card. That was on this one right here. And yeah, because I missed this one by one. So that one that one actually got wounded. So we took that AI card off. We're back to we're back to good now. But now we have to deal with these two hits. Uh, we have the glorious primary eyes first. All right. So as I said, the bow has three strength. The Phoenix has minus two toughness right now. So that's a five that we need to get for this first one. Critical wound. Oh, she does not suffer g destroyed genitals, and instead, the Phoenix gains minus two accuracy tokens. Persistent injury, keep it in play. Wow. Okay. Fantastic. So, minus two accuracy. Y'all, we might have a shot. We might. We might come out of this all right. I shouldn't say that. I really. The game does not like it when you say stuff like that. Oh. Okay. All right, so now, oh, wait, wait, don't forget the wound. All right, so now, feathered, uh, the feathered breast. Okay, again, uh, we need, oh, no. What is wrong? What in the world? I, I was about to say, what's wrong with me? Why, why didn't I choose this one first over over the, the Glorious Primary Eyes, but it's because the Glorious Primary Eyes have first strike. I had to do them first. So now my only hope is a critical wound here, otherwise, or, or not to wound at all. So I need to get, I really, right here, I want to get less than a five is what I want. And of course, I, I wound this time and I can't even help it. All right, so, so y'all, the Glorious Primary Eye, uh, that goes back here. That means that the minus two accuracy is gone. Wow, maybe we're not gonna see. See, I, I, the, I said it. I said we're gonna be all right, and immediately the game took it away from me. So that leaves Wallace, who is just gonna go one, two, three, four, five to get a little bit closer, and yeah. And next, 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 we've got the board mood. All right, so. Oh, and you know what? This AI card comes back on top of the deck. That was the wound card, the wound from hitting the glorious primary eyes from wounding them. So just really, that was really rough. This guy is a bastard. All right, so board. Uh, instead of drawing AI, do Spiral Cyclone. So here we go. Nobody's in the eye of the storm. A poor Elector almost made it, but he didn't. So... All other survivors suffer damage equal to the monster's level and knock back seven and bash. And then discard this mood card. All right, here we go. So she just comes back here, is knocked down, and you know what? We'll handle all their wounds here in just a minute after we get them all moved. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And Wallace up here is already against the wall, so he just falls down where he's at. All right, so let's hit Clarice first. Her legs. She will take that. That's a light wound to her legs. All right, and then we'll do Lecter. 
his waist. That is a heavy wound. He's already knocked down, so we'll go in and accept that. And now the artist to the chest or the, the body. She has two armor there, so she's down to one armor now. And finally, Wallace to the head. That is Wallace's last armor on his head. He has no more armor on his head. He's got to learn to duck. All right, so now everyone's knocked down, so there is no threat. So the Phoenix is going to do disdain again, which means everyone's going to suffer brain damage, one brain damage, which means Clarice has no insanity left. And then everyone else is going to take a light brain damage, or the, the brain damage box, the light brain damage box is checked there. So the next brain damage that everybody takes, except for Clarice, is going to result in a severe uh, brain trauma. Also, at this point, spiral age normally would happen. However, since no one has any age tokens right now, nothing happens as far as that goes. And everyone stands up. I tell you what, the Phoenix is doing a fantastic job of keeping the artist away from him. Uh, we have we've only got to see see uh, Muramasa work one time, you know, and, and that's really the weapon I was counting on doing some damage here. Hopefully, hopefully we can we can get that resolved here in a minute. All, and then my other guy Wallace hasn't barely been able to get get down there with the with the Phoenix. Okay, so I think what we'll do is we'll have. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so she can get there without using any, uh, without using any survival or anything like that. And that's the eye of the storm. So I'm kind of learning slow, but the eye of the storm is where I want to be. Oh, by the way, these two minus two toughness tokens that were only there for the board mood. So those are gone now as well. So she's going to attack with the counterweight axe. All right, two speed, and it has a accuracy of six plus. Nothing, okay. All right, we're going to go with Wallace next, and he is going to dash. So that puts him down to two survival. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now from there... From there, he's going to pounce, which lets him spend his movement and his act activation to move three spaces in a straight line. And he can then activate a melee weapon with plus one strength. One, two, three. He's going to activate his guitar, his guitars with plus one strength, or his guitar with plus one strength. So that's going to be two speed except he has plus one speed because of his white lion armor. So three speed with seven plus accuracy. Only one hit, but I'll take it. We've got the glorious eye, all right? Oh, but it's a, so we have the critical one. Ah, oh, all these rewinds, man, these are terrible. Now the guitars are deadly, so a nine will count as a critical. So here we go. Woo! Oh man, we got it. We got it. Okay, so the monster's eye bursts with milky ichor. An adjacent survivor gains plus one uh, insanity and plus one survival. If they are insane, they may spend three survival to find deep inspiration in the taste and gain one random fighting art. Well, let's see. The two adjacent survivors are going to be uh, Wallace and Clarice, neither one are insane, so that second part doesn't matter. But So we will give this, I'm going to give this to Wallace because Clarice hasn't suffered an injury to her brain yet, whereas Wallace has. So he gets plus one insanity, and his survival is now back up to three. Oh, and we can't forget to move an AI card over. All right. All right, so he's got two there, and... One, two, three, four, five there. So we've got him down to seven. All right. That's still quite a bit to go, though. All right. So now 
Oh, you know, you know, I don't know why I didn't. I should have used her earlier. I'll go ahead and use her now and look at these two AI cards. What do we have? We have Ripple, which is an advanced card. The steady pulse of their lantern suddenly stops. Perform Spiral Age. Okay, well, currently I don't have any age cards, so it's not terrible. And then here's Wing Punch, which is a basic card. Target gains one age token. Uh, random survivor, target gains one age token. Target is Doom, materialize an attack target. Well, this is actually pretty bad for a basic card. We're gonna put Wing Punch on top in hopes that uh, Lecter can do something about this because Lecter is one, two, three, four, five. He's going to surge, oh, I'm sorry, dash to there. One, two, three, four, five, yep. Which drops him down to, he has, that's his last survival. So Lecter has no survival left. He has no way of generating survival. So he's on his own at this point, unless something else happens. And he is going to then come down here in the blind spot, also in the eye of the storm. So everybody's in a decent spot if something stupid like that uh, cyclone stuff happens again. And now he's gonna activate his blood paint. So here we go. All right, so the bone axe, six plus accuracy. Two hits. The feathered neck. And I was wondering when that was gonna happen. Uh, there's the trap. All right, the survivors are frozen in time. All survivors are doomed. They cannot block or use fighting arts. The attacker, it is caught helpless. Perform basic action, target the attacker. All attack rolls hit on two plus regardless of any modifiers in play. Lecter just cannot catch a break. Here we go. So Phoenix turns around and is gonna blast Lecter. First Lecter is gonna gain an age token. So he's at one age token now. And then it's a speed two attack. So they both hit, and he gets hit in the head and the leg, and that's two damage for the basic attack. So in Lecter's legs, that's going to be a heavy wound, so he's knocked down, and Lecter's head now has one armor left. Okay, so the hit location deck has been reshuffled, but the basic action actually is not even completely done yet because the final thing is Razor Wind. Survivors in the Blast Zone, which is poor Lecter, suffer knockback seven, bash, and bleed one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, fortunately, he's already down, so bash doesn't really do anything. But then he gets bleed one, so he has one bleeding token now. And five bleeding tokens, of course, end up killing a survivor. And let's see, there he is all the way over there. Now here's the worst part of this whole thing, is putting that really bad basic card on top has now backfired because that's what the Phoenix is drawing. So here we go, wing punch, pick target, random survivor. Let's see, we'll say one, two, Three, four will be Wallace over here. Five, six, seven, eight. Six. Oh, that's going to be Charlize. Or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the artist. All right, so target gains one age token. That is her first. And target is doomed. Materialize and attack. Well, you know what? Doom doesn't matter because she has no survival anyway. Materialize and attack the target. So we'll put him, you know what, let's put him just like that. That will give, we'll, we'll put him there. That will give, actually, I like him better there. Nope, no, I'm wrong, there. Okay, sorry, but that, that will give Wallace easy access to the blind spot and the eye of the storm. Okay, so now for the actual attack, it is one speed, two plus accuracy, Four damage and after damage, tar target suffers knockback seven and bash. Wonderful. So two plus accuracy, however, let's remember that the artist has three evasion. So it's actually gonna be five plus on the accuracy. But of course, of course, why wouldn't the Phoenix roll a nine? 
Four damage. Four damage. Where is she getting hit? In the waist. So that gets rid of all of her armor in the waist. She had two armor. And then she's got a light and heavy wound in the waist. And, of course, knocked back all the way to the edge of the board and knocked down. And now let's not forget that the Phoenix still has to do a basic action because of zeal. So closest threat in range is going to be Wallace. Phoenix turns around. And Wallace gains an age token. That's one for him. Phoenix moves one closer. Now, actually, hold on. Before the Phoenix moves, no, Wallace doesn't have enough movement to get away from the Phoenix. So, yeah. So, anyway, so the Phoenix moves there. It's going to attack with two, and we'll see. Maybe he can dodge some of this. So, two speed. Wallace has one evasion, so three plus. One of them misses. Fantastic. And, well, you know what? Let's see where it hits. His leg, you know what? He has armor there. We'll take that hit. And then Wallace, before we move down to the Razor Wind, there's a flow there. So Wallace is going to spend one survival to dash out of the way of Razor Wind. We'll go one, two, three, four, right there into the eye of the storm. Actually, five, six, because next at the beginning of his next turn. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Let's think about this. Hold on. If he goes there. No. I'm trying to think of a way that Wallace could use. Yeah, here we go. Okay. So that right there, if he moves there, that would be the th three spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now next turn, he can pounce in and use pounce. That's what we're going to do. That, that's what we're going to do. Except I kind of think maybe it'd be better to be able to reach the eye of the storm. You know what? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to worry about pounce. I'm going to have him go here. And then on his turn here in a minute, he's going to go down to the eye of the storm in the blind spot. So that's the end of the monster's turn. Now, the artist got knocked down on the monster's turn, so she'll still be knocked down. However, Lecter got knocked down before it. Pretty sure if I remember correctly. So he's going to stand up. And now it is their turn. And we're going to have Wallace go first. He's going to come down here. And he's going to attack with the Katar. So it's going to be three speed in the blind spot. And you know what? I don't think I even gave Lecter the benefit. Not that it mattered based on what happened last time. I didn't give him the benefit of the, of the blind spot. The accuracy bonus there. But we'll remember to do it this time. All right, so Lecter attacking with three speed, and it's going to be six plus accuracy with the bonus. One hit, okay. Got the glorious head, and of course it's a rewind one. Of course it is. So if we get a nine, though, if we get a nine, then we'll have a critical wound because the Katars are deadly. And we didn't. Six. So nothing happens. And I believe don't I have to move him five spaces away? Yep. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So now let's have let's have her come in. One, two, three, four to right there and attack with the counterweight axe. All right, two speed, six plus. One hit, okay. The hard beak, super dense. All right, so when you get a critical or other stuff might happen. All right, so with this one, four, uh, a four strength. All right, so we need a six. Oh, I got a four. Still have the reflex though. The monster's glare pierces the survivor's peace of mind, causing explosions of pain. Turn to face the attacker and roll 1d10. If the result is less than the attacker's hunt XP, they suffer one brain damage for each age token they have. All right. So I'll go in and turn him to face her. And now she has 
uh, four hunt XP. It is where, where was that a minute ago? It is not less than obviously, so she doesn't suffer any brain damage. So we're fine. Oh, and actually, she doesn't even have an age token, so it's it's fine. So the only person left is Lecter. He obviously can't get close enough. He'll still move. One, two, three, four. So close. Almost there. Five. All right. So let's see. Next. Next we will do... Uh, oh, no, no, wait. That's everybody, actually. That's everybody. So now it's the, it's the monster's turn. So let's see what he has in store for us. Oh, that's right. It's the advanced card Ripple. Steady Pulse of Lantern suddenly stops. Perform Spiral Age. All survivors suffer brain damage equal to the monster's level. So we'll do Spiral Age first. Okay, so first the artist is going to age. And she has one age token. So she gets the 400 XP. And Elector also has one. So he is going to age four. And Wallace has one. Oh boy. Woo. Okay, well let's let's do the age event. Each of these people are gonna get some good stuff. Okay, so for Lecter, we're at the improved reflexes age. 17 is going to get him a random fighting art again. Berserker, once per showdown, you may spend activation to suffer bash and the Frenzy Brain Trauma. So what exactly is Frenzy? Well, Frenzy gain 1d5 insanity, plus one speed token and plus one strength token, ignore slow on melee weapons. You may not spend survival. You may not use fighting arts. You may not use weapon specialization or mastery. Can be gained multiple times, last until the end of the showdown. So basically, I don't have any survival. So I don't have to worry about not being able to spend that, but I could start gaining insanity, speed tokens, and strength tokens by intentionally frenzying myself. Now, now, granted, with Berserker, I can only do that once per showdown, but regardless, the point is that, that it could be worth it to go ahead and do that, even though I couldn't use the rest of my fighting art. What was the other fighting art he had? Extra sense, dodge two times per round. Well, he can't dodge. He has no survival. So yeah, this this is actually a pretty good one to have for when you run out of survival. All right, and now Wallace has aged all the way up to enhanced senses, which reads, experience sharpens your instincts. Roll on the table below. So here we go. 12. Gain one random fighting art. Crazed on perfect hit gain plus one insanity. Okay, so now the Phoenix has to finish his turn with the basic action, which of course is coming after Clarice, all right? So she's gonna gain one age token. He's going to uh, attack her with two speed, two plus accuracy. She has two evasion, so four plus. Both of them hit, unfortunately. So let's see where. Head and legs. You know what, she'll take the one to the head because she has four armor there. So she's down to two armor. The legs, she's going to spend, ooh, wait. Mm. So I have a choice of taking a severe injury to the legs. Or, because he only has one survival. So I could dodge this hit, avoid a severe injury, and instead she's gonna get hit with the razor wind Suffer knockback, bash, and bleed. But at least there's no severe injury there. So yeah, that's why I'm, I'm going to dodge. I'm going to dodge the severe injury. And and she's going to take knockback seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And knockdown. And a bleed, which is her first. So that's not terrible. That's the end of the monster's turn. So she stands back up. Maybe Lecter should go ahead and activate his Berserker ability. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna activate Lecter. He's gonna knock it, that's gonna knock himself down. He's gonna gain one D5 insanity. What uh well that's kind of caca. No, 
Uh, yeah, that, that one was cockeyed. Let's do it again. Okay, so three. He gains three insanity, which makes him insane. So now, as I said before, that means that now what he has is plus one speed and plus one strength. So now we've got Wallace. One, two, three, four. Okay, good. He gets in there. And he's going to obviously attack with the guitar. That's going to be three speed. And oh, what did he need? Uh, three speed. It was seven plus accuracy, right? Yeah, seven plus accuracy. So nothing. Are you kidding me? The one bright side is that he's in the eye of the storm. But that is, that's it. There's nothing else. Yeah. Okay, so then with the artist, she can go one, two, three, four, five. But that's, you know, that's all she could do as far as movement goes. So instead, I can either look at the top two AI cards or she could get into, you know what? She can use the double dash. One, two, three, four, five. Now, ooh, she's, hmm. Yeah, we'll take that chance. She doesn't have too many age tokens, so she should be okay. If that, whatever that card is, the uh, anal torium, if that comes up. Okay, so that went okay. I mean, considering that I'm coming in this fight, having suffered two TPKs, two total party kills, I mean, before this, which means I haven't gotten any good uh, uh, resources recently. I've been kind of just, all, all these this weaponry, I probably should be a little bit more advanced, basically. And I'm not so, the fact that I've got about half the Phoenix's health taken care of so far, I'm okay with that. So come back for the next video and we'll see how we finish up against him. If you want to support the channel, there's links in the description below for all kinds of different ways you can do that, including getting some bored Cthulhu t-shirts if you want that from geekygoodies.com. And until next time, if you're bored online, bored offline.